In this video, I want to talk about a topic I'm really excited about and that makes me really excited, and that is developer productivity. First, if you like this video and videos like it, go ahead and leave a like on this video and subscribe so that you can see more content in the future. So I first wanna say that productivity is all about balance. You are not going to be fully productive if you are working all the time. It's not manageable. It's not something that works for really anybody. So make sure that you are getting enough sleep, that you are taking care of yourself, that you are doing things outside of work that you care about. And I know that that may look different if you're still in a place that's really affected by coronavirus or work from home or anything like that. And I know it has for me over the past year, but I do want to note that these things are so important. I do not work all the time by any means. I normally work a pretty typical 40 hour work week. Maybe I'll add a couple hours here and there for side work, but for the most part, I work a really normal work schedule. I do not work nonstop. I'm not perfect. And Productivity is something that I am always evolving with, but it is something that I find fun to talk about and I have a lot of systems that might be able to help you, which is why I wanted to do this video. And I also want to note that earlier in my career, I worked a lot more than I do now. I don't even want to do the math on how much I used to work, but it was a lot. I didn't have a ton of balance in my life and I let a lot of this consume me like social media and learning new things for work and I wanted to do it all, which is not possible. Nobody can do that. And so I think one important thing to think about is burnout. There is a book by Nicole Lapin called Becoming Superwoman. It's all about her struggles with overwork and burnout and she's actually hospitalized for it and i think it's a really interesting picture of what can happen if you decide that you're just going to work all the time it's not possible it's not something that's sustainable and so doing small things in order to increase your productivity are going to help much more than just trying to work 24 7. i think the term work-life balance is overrated and completely imperfect as well because maybe it's life work balance instead and it looks different at different points for different people. I try really hard to make sure that I am balancing the other pieces of my life outside of work. So be taking care of my health is a huge piece of this. For example, I try to work out every day. I normally do yoga before work and then I like rock climb a lot of days after work. And then every Saturday I go on a long hike with my family. So I really recommend having these outlets for being healthy if you can. I also try to eat balanced meals. So trying to have protein, fat, and carb balance in order to keep you full and productive, I think that that really helps as well. I'm not a health expert. That's not what I'm here to talk to you about. But I do think thinking about these things more holistically and the input into yourself instead of just productivity all the time. It's, it's more than that. I also want to note that if you have the privilege of doing this, having a separate workspace in your home is so, so helpful. I've not always had this at all city rent prices, but when I do have an office space, I find that it's really nice to be able to detach. I also do not have work slack on my phone. I don't have work email on my phone, nothing like that. Outside of work hours, I am off the clock. Sometimes that's hard with like social media and balancing that, but for the most part, I do tune out once it's no longer in work hours. I also would say that a uh, productivity super hack is to work a staggered schedule from your team so that you have a couple hours of the day that are just yours. So I normally work from around 7.45 my time to around 4 5 p.m. my time, which my team is two hours behind, so they are two time zones over, which makes it so that I've got a couple hours in the morning where I can just work and I don't have to worry about Slack or people asking me things or anything like that. It's something that I've negotiated actually in most jobs that I've had and I find it really, really helpful. Uh, and so working the schedule that works best for you and aligns most with your biological clock, I think is really, really helpful. I wanna give a shout out to two books. These are Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg and Atomic Habits. And 
these are books all about how creating systems instead of creating goals is really productive. And I try really hard to build up healthy habits and productive habits instead of just having these massive unachievable goals that I don't have any way of living up to. So I think that both of these books really, really helped frame my mindset. We have a Ladybug podcast episode on Atomic Habits if you want to read that, but I really, really enjoy both. I'll link them down in the description. I also live and die by my calendar. I send pretty much everything that's even remotely within work hours to my work calendar so that I can keep on top of everything. If something is not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. Like I ask my partner, I ask my friends to send me calendar invites or else I'm just gonna forget about the thing. I also will block time on there specifically to work on certain tasks. If I know that they're going to take a while, then I'll block the calendar just for that. Otherwise, I'm never gonna have time to do the things that I need to. Another piece of this is prioritization. And there are so many balls that you'll always be asked to juggle and more than you usually can. And so you have to think about what balls to drop strategically that they won't completely derail everything. They won't break anything, but you can't do everything. I can't do everything. That's just the way that it is. And I find it hard to negotiate this myself. It's like, oh no, I want to do everything, but I just can't. There's not enough hours in the day. And so finding systems in order to offload, I think is really important. I try to think of the top three things for me to do on any given day. So I will put those at the top of my Trello board for the day, the three things that I need to get done. I also try to have some tasks on my to-do list that I know will not take me very much time or effort that I can do if I have like 10 minutes in between a meeting or something like that. This helps me stay focused and allows me to use those little tiny chunks of time on my calendar. Also, I want to say that if you have the ability to offload things to other people, that is so helpful, whether it is in work or if it's in your life outside of work. So things like hiring an editor to edit podcasts and YouTube, or hiring somebody to clean my house sometimes, or ordering takeout or meal delivery, or any of these things that can save me some time in my day, I find usually worth it. And so again, it's a privilege to be able to do that. I know that not everybody has the capacity to do all of these things, but thinking about what you can offload to other people, whether it be people on your team, whether it be people in your life, you can't do everything and you need to acknowledge that, unfortunately. This allows me to spend more time on the thing that fires me up, which is teaching code and mentoring other people who are teaching people to code. Let's talk about motivation. So motivation is imperfect, and I think it's important to note that, that if you're relying only on motivation to do something, chances are it's not going to get done. So building up habits is really important for this so that you can do the thing even if you don't feel like doing it at that time. I also like to think of my reason for things. So why am I trying to do something? What is the impetus for it? Why do I care about this thing? And maybe even writing it down so that I can come back to that reason when I am doubting it or feeling like I don't wanna do that thing. I also am a total extrovert. And so for me, having a group of friends where I can talk about something really helps me. So for example, doing my podcast with friends helps me to be more motivated to do it than if I were to do it myself. Knowing yourself and knowing what's going to motivate you to do something is really important. I also like to have groups of friends where I mastermind or create strategies together where we are all interested in the same things and have space to discuss that. A couple other strategies that I use are the two minute rule. So if something is going to take less than two minutes, I just go ahead and do it without adding it to my to-do list. Also time boxing. So if I really don't feel like some doing something, usually I can at least get myself to do it for two minutes or something like that. So I'll actually put a timer on out there that I set for those two minutes and then I write for those two minutes or do whatever I don't want to do. Sometimes it gets you started enough that you'll keep doing it. If not, then putting the two minutes towards something is better than putting zero minutes towards something and at least you made some progress. I also am really motivated by finishing things. So leaving things half finished can make it so that I just leave that thing forever. And so I try to break tasks into smaller and smaller subtasks so that I feel accomplished with those smaller tasks and can achieve those without 
feeling like I'm not getting anywhere. Communication is one of the biggest blockers to productivity, I think. We get so many emails, we get so many text messages, we get so many slacks, and then I get so many messages on social media as well, like how do I triage all that? And I have some strategies that I've worked out over the years as well. So just for some numbers, I normally get a couple hundred emails a day, around 20 Twitter direct messages, and maybe 200 Twitter mentions a day. So that's more than I can handle myself. So I, over time, have had to make peace with myself that I'm not going to be able to respond to everything. It's just not possible and it's not scalable. I personally do not scale. My systems can scale, but I do not personally. And so responding to one-off things doesn't work. So creating evergreen content that I can send to people instead of answering one-off questions over and over again. That scales a little bit better. I also just give myself the permission to not respond if it's something that I don't think that I can help out with or that it's something that I've created content on on the past but the person just didn't Google for it. I've given myself permission to be okay with that and to give myself space so that I don't need to respond to absolutely everything. I do have TweetDeck set up in order to mass respond to things. I find that the format helps me a little bit better than Twitter web client. I also follow Andreas Klinger's email system, which I find really helpful. You sort different emails with different color stars using Gmail, and it sorts things into different buckets for like need to respond or do something about this email. It's something that I'm waiting for somebody else to respond to, or this is something that I need someday, but not right now. I find that this is really helpful and I try to stay to as close to inbox zero as possible. I will also link that down below. Let's talk about taking notes. So this is one of my absolutely favorite, most important things that I do. And I use Foam Research, which is a in VS Code markdown system for notes. And so I use this to triage my notes on pretty much everything. If I'm reading a book, I take notes and put them in there. If I am learning about a new topic for work, I take my initial notes in there. So I really enjoy that system. I also have a Trello board that I pretty much live by, and that has all of my meetings as cards in there. I have all of my to-dos on there, and then I will make random cards for things as well. To walk through that, I've got three main columns that have my to-dos. So they are today, tomorrow, and this week. Then I have waiting. So those are things that I am waiting to do for whatever reason, whether that be that the due date is really far in the future, or I'm waiting for a response back from somebody to get more information, or even if that thing is in progress, like I am doing laundry and waiting for the load to finish. Then I have an affirmations column, which has things that I am working on at that moment and like to look at every time that I do my to-dos. Then I have my done list. I have some automations on here so that when I move a card to done, it gets a check mark on it and all of the due dates are removed. Then I have an inbox of things that are not triaged yet. I have ideas for things that I want to improve on the future. I have take notes, which is content that I want to go through in the future, whether that be courses or books or articles or podcasts, anything that I want to read or view in the future and take notes on, it goes in that column. Then I have a big content ideas column that has all my ideas for future content. And then I have content templates. I really live by the idea that I'm going to forget to do things that I'm not super detail oriented. And so I have these really detailed checklists on what to do for recording each time. So for example, this is for a YouTube video. I have to make sure that my mic is on, I have to check my do not disturb, and then I have my checklist of things that I need to do here as well. And I find that this helps me to stay on track and actually get everything done. I also have automated cards that show up that have routines for different times of the day. So I have a morning routine, I have a lunchtime routine, and I want to do certain things at those times every day, so I have a checklist for those times. While I'm in meetings or I am reading something, I will take initial short notes on those Trello cards and then change those into either to-dos or put those into my notes to keep down the road. I'm also weirdly obsessed with organizing all the files on my computers, storing them to backups, and then also 
triaging my bookmarks. So making sure that those are all organized into folders and that I go through them pretty frequently in order to make sure that nothing is outdated or no longer needed. I have a really cool desktop on my computer that has different boxes and I use this to organize the things that I really need on my day to day basis. I also wanted to talk about concentration. So I have seen a lot of people say that they love the Pomodoro routine, which is when you like work for 15 minutes and then take a five minute break or something along those lines. And I do not work best like that at all. I like to have long blocks of time to do a bunch of things. And so I'd rather just concentrate and keep flowing with my work rather than taking any immediate breaks. But then I also like to know my personal biological schedules of I am most awake at mid morning. And so that's probably a good time for me to film something or give a talk or something along those lines. Whereas late afternoon, I usually am getting a little bit more tired. And so I might stumble over my words more or something along those lines. Sometimes if I get distracted, I use this app called self control, which will block websites that are distracting me as well. So I hope this was helpful. My system again is just my system. It is very personal and everybody has a different system that will work for them. But I just wanted to talk through these things in case some of these ideas would be helpful for somebody else. So again, if you like this video, please throw a thumbs up on it so that I'll make more similar ones in the future. You can also leave a comment with what you want to see more on if you have any questions for me, I can answer those. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.